Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, it's going to be another fun painting. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take progress photos. Now on my traceable, I did go over it with a black Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are going to pause the video and draw what you see on your canvas. If you utilize the traceable, you do not have to go over it with the black Sharpie marker. Um, you can just jump right into the painting process. Now we are starting with the background and I'm going to be doing a mixture of yellow and green and um, sometimes a little more yellow, sometimes a little more green. doesn't have to be perfect. And here's a few different brush strokes that you can try when you go to apply your paint on the background. Now you do have full permission if you prefer a different background or more green or blue or purple. Feel free to switch out to whatever colors you want for your painting. That's kind of the fun of the painting process. Now, if you're holding your breath, remember to breathe and relax as you're painting. Uh, we do tend to hold our breath when we're a little bit nervous or we want to do a really good job. That is not going to help you. So if you catch yourself holding your breath, just take a big inhale, smile at yourself, and keep on painting. Now, as you come to the edges of your canvas, if you are on a stretched canvas, I do recommend carrying that color around the sides of the canvas. It just looks nicer when you hang it on the wall. Um, and it's nice just having that color wrap around the edge. Now you will notice um, that I don't mix a whole lot of paint. I kind of make a mixture each time I grab it. Sometimes it's a little more green, sometimes a little more yellow. Um, like I said, embrace that on your painting because on mine, the left hand side's a little more green and the right hand side's a little more yellow. And I kind of like that variety. So don't feel like you have to get anything about today's painting or any painting um, completely perfect. It is more important to enjoy the process of painting rather than having, you know, a picture perfect or photorealistic image. So be kind to yourself as you are going through this process, especially if this is your first time painting. And if you need to, feel free, you can switch down to another brush, that middle brush or the pointy brush, um, if it makes it a little bit easier coming close to your design. Uh, you can even finger paint if you feel like it. I actually have some students that enjoy doing that. So basically just have fun. All right, so a good place to pause the video, take your progress photo. We're now gonna move into a smaller brush and we're gonna be working on the black fur of our panda. And we're gonna fill in the dark areas with black and then we'll fill in the rest of it with dark gray. And we'll kind of do the same thing when we get to the white fur of our panda. So as we move along right now, it is just that pure black, that medium flat brush. And I want you to just observe the place and the shape that I put this on my painting and mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. And as you do this, you are strengthening your power of observation. You're looking at the screen, you're seeing where I place it, you internalize it, and then you go to apply it on your canvas. And the more that you do this, the more you will strengthen your power of observation. And the more that you'll actually start seeing stuff um, as you go to paint other things, um, as you push your creative exploration. So these are good kind of foundational skills that you are acquiring um, in the painting process. But most importantly, just have fun. And I am using student grade paint, so I'm applying it a little bit thicker. Notice that every couple of brush strokes, I am going back and grabbing more paint to apply to it. And with acrylic paint, you can apply it thicker for more opaque coverage, or you can let it dry and apply a second layer on top of it or a third layer on top of it. Uh, acrylic paint is rather versatile for a lot of things that you might want to work with. All right, and again, just kind of filling in that space. We've uh, got a few more spots, and then we'll be moving into our dark gray. And it is kind of nice just to see how you transform that blank surface into something that you create. You should be very proud of yourself. And hopefully while you are painting, you forget about the rest of the world for a little bit and you're only focusing on moving the paint on the canvas. 
That is one of the other main benefits of getting creative and bringing painting into your life. It's a nice escape from the world. All right, so I think our last spot is that nose. And if you need to um, grab that small pointy brush, we're gonna do the nose and that little mouth area. And as you work with the smaller brushes, just kind of play with the pressure of your brush. Light pressure creates a uh, smaller mark or a smaller line. A little more pressure is gonna give you a wider line. And as you're in the beginning stages, play with both. And a lot of stuff that you learn in today's painting, when you go to paint the second and third time, um, what you learn today will make even more sense the second and third time painting. And that's why I encourage all my students to find a creative outlet on a regular basis because it's not about being perfect, but just getting more comfortable with your tools and getting more comfortable with the process of painting. So another good spot to take your progress photo, and then you're gonna move right into your dark gray. And I'm using the exact same brush and pulling a little bit of that white over into the black paint. We still wanna go pretty dark, because um, again, we are in the dark fur for the panda but we also wanna make sure that there's a little bit of a difference between that pure black and the color, the dark gray that we're applying right now. So um, if you end up applying it to your canvas and you realize it's still pretty dark, go ahead and make your color a little bit lighter. Nothing is wrong with adjusting um, your color or adjusting really anything after you've maybe made a few marks on your canvas and realize that you need to change it. That is part of the creative process. And again, I am applying that paint kind of thick. And then there'll be times that you see that I hold the brush at kind of a 45 degree angle as I apply the paint. And that allows me to apply it a little bit thicker and not have the brush strokes show up. So I'm kind of using the side of the brush. And that's something else I want you to just kind of play with as you're getting comfortable with holding the paint and applying it to the surface. You're doing a great job. All right, and again on this one, just like with the background, you're noticing that I'm making the color two and three times. So if your dark gray gets a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, just kind of embrace that variety. As long as there's still a difference between your two colors, um, it's gonna help give a bit more of that 3D uh, effect as we look at the final image. And I am, um, on all of these, I am going right over those traceable lines, the black Sharpie marker lines. I am covering that with paint. At the end of the painting, we will do a black outline. So if you end up not covering some of it, you can get it with that black outline. All right, so another place to pause the video and take your progress photo, we're gonna do the eye color for our panda. And I gave the panda light blue eyes. If you wanna give them brown eyes or green or purple or anything you want, go right ahead and switch it out. And for the blue eyes, I'm starting with the white and a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of blue goes a long way to make a light blue. So start off with a small amount of pigment. You can always add more. And I am going right around the pupil on the eyeball. There is a catch light in there. And if you happen to go over the catch light, that's okay. We will reapply it at the end um, after we do our black outline. Same if you happen to go over the pupil of the eye. We will reapply that pupil and catch light later on in the video. All right, so another place to pause the video and take your progress photo. And now we're gonna move into light gray. So just like making the eye color, put a little bit of white aside and a tiny, tiny amount of black will go a long way to make a light gray. And you do wanna go pretty light here. Not quite pure white, but you do want a light gray. So that way we can kind of put our shadow on for the white fur, and then we'll fill in the remaining space with white paint. So kind of recreating that same formula that we did for the black fur, uh, but just with different colors. Again, um, taking a look at where I place it, the shape that I make with each color and mimicking that to the best of your ability on your canvas. If you are inclined to do something I do not do, go ahead, trust your instincts. Um, that's how you learn in the creative world. It's kind of how you learn in life too. But trust your instincts and with acrylic paint, if you end up not liking it later, you can always paint another color on top of it. Like I said, uh, uh, acrylic paint has a lot of wiggle room. All right, so here I'm grabbing that direct white and basically filling in the rest of the space 
And because that light gray paint is still wet, when I come up next to it with the white paint, I'm just gonna kind of overlap it a little bit, blending, this is called uh, wet on wet blending, and just kind of diffusing that line um, of where the two colors meet. And this is also a nice place that just kind of, you can finger paint, use light pressure with your brush, but you're getting comfortable with mixing your paint and mixing two colors. And then the next time that you paint, this will make even more sense and be even more comfortable to do. So art is one of those things that you're constantly building on uh, the skills that you learned from the last time that you painted. All right, and here you can see a bit more of that 45 degree angle as I'm holding the brush a little bit more sideways just to get a little bit better coverage but trust your instincts and adjust to what you need to with your tools and your paint. All right, I think that face, the little mouth area is the last part to apply with the white paint, and then we'll be getting that green for the bamboo, and then we'll be going back in with our outlines. You guys are doing awesome. All right, so another place, pause the video, take your progress photo. And I'm still using that middle flat brush, but if you need to move down to the small pointy brush, go right ahead. And I'm grabbing that direct green and filling in that stalk of bamboo. Um, fill the whole thing in, go right over those traceable lines, put it on there kind of thick as needed. And then we will do a little highlight of yellow next on the top uh, left-hand side of the bamboo stalk. So clean that brush. You're gonna grab just a little bit of yellow and again, notice it's going on the top of the bamboo on the left-hand side. Does not have to be perfect, um, but just getting a hint of a highlight on there. All right, and your last place to pause the video and take a progress photo, we'll be moving into either the middle flat brush or the small pointy brush. And if you need to go back and forth between the two brushes, go right ahead. And we're gonna basically just redo all those outlines with black paint. And I like that middle flat brush and I'm holding it sideways. I like it because it holds a little bit more paint and I can create a bit of a thicker line. And I like a bit of a thicker line just because it gives it a bit more of a pop art feel. Um, but if you prefer a different width of line or even a different color, I've had some students that have used yellow or teal um, or even red or pink, like you can switch out this color to anything that you want. Remember to breathe. If you are finding that your brush is shaky as you go to do this, that means you're holding your breath. So exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas and you'll notice it'll be a little bit easier for you. Again, your muscles are remembering and learning a lot right now. So when you go to paint after this painting, so much of what you're learning right now will make even more sense. All right, and also notice that every... Um, Every couple of sections, I go back and grab more paint. Remember to do that. You might get in a good groove, but if you don't keep applying paint to your canvas, um, it won't show up. So remember, every now and then, go back and grab more paint from your pile. And with the width of this line, I am overlapping the background a little bit, as well as the subject matter of the panda. And that's what kind of gives it that pop art feel. And if you have varying widths of line um, in your painting today, that's okay. Just embrace where you're at for today's painting. Like I said earlier, the more that you paint, the more you'll refine your skills and get more comfortable with your tools. And at the beginning stages of painting, that's really the most important thing that you can do is just get comfortable with the process of painting and allowing yourself to be creative. You are a lot more creative than you give yourself credit for. And hopefully after this painting, um, you start to see that about yourself. All right, so I think we're almost done. And I do switch down to the smaller pointy brush when I move up to do the outline on the eyes. So if you switched over to the pointy brush sooner than I did, completely okay. Do what is best for you. All right, so we're going to outline those eyes. Oh, and the nose. I forgot about that. So outline the nose and the eyes, and we'll reapply that white catch light in the eyes after we do the outlining. And again, remember to breathe, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas.
All right, doing a good job. And here as I work on the pupil, like I said, I just go right over that catch light. Don't even worry about it. And if you need to turn the canvas sideways or upside down because it makes it a little bit easier to get to a certain area, go right ahead and do that. I keep mine in the same orientation just because I'm filming the video. All right, so now he looks kind of weird without his catch light. So you're going to clean your brush really good. We're going to get white paint. Actually, I think I had a little bit of a black paint on there. So just kind of wiping off that paint um, for my little mistake. And then now with the pointy brush, grabbing that white paint, we're going to reapply that catch light. And literally, it's just going to be a dot of white in that black area, in that black pupil. And almost kind of at the one o'clock area, if you're thinking about it as a clock. And again, just kind of place that dot on there. I did reapply the highlight on the nose. And I'm really proud of you guys for painting. Please don't wait too long to do your next one. And thanks for hanging out with me and getting creative. Until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can and any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.